far away from God's original plan. God created man for the purpose. Man drifted away from that purpose. And the reason for all the confusion there is in the world and in every life drifted away from that purpose of God. And the whole purpose of salvation is to bring man back to that original purpose with which man was created. So it's very important for us to understand what was God's original purpose in creating man. Uh, if we were to represent God's plan for man like a straight line, we can say that when Adam fell, he fell down from that straight line. And Jesus came not just to bring man up to that straight line, but so that he can walk along that straight line. And Jesus came not just to bring man up to that straight line, but so that he can walk along that is an incomplete understanding of the gospel. If you remember that God's original plan was up there, and when man fell, Jesus came to lift man up again. That's only part of the gospel. The purpose of Jesus lifting us back was to fulfill that original purpose again. So, if you don't understand that original purpose, then you'll only think that Jesus came to lift us up. That's all many people understand. And when your only understanding of the gospel is that Jesus came to lift us up from the pit, uh, your life is going to be full of frustration because you don't understand God's original plan. Many Christians do not have a satisfying Christian experience because all they think is Jesus came to forgive my sin. And so their whole life is spent in falling and getting up and falling and getting up and falling and getting up and they live and die like that. You know, it can be a very frustrating experience if you think that the entire school life finishes with lower kindergarten. If you think that all of education is what you study in the lower kindergarten, can you, can you imagine how frustrating it will be for an intelligent person? Always studying ABC and always studying 2 plus 2. Now, for stupid people, that's okay. But any intelligent person will get frustrated. And that's why many, many believers are frustrated. They have only understood that elementary part of the gospel that Jesus died 
to forgive my sins. And I understood the importance of Christian life is not exciting, it's quite boring. And I understood the importance of Christian life is not exciting, it's quite boring. And if you go to the average so-called gospel meeting, that's all you hear. Jesus can forgive your sin. Some also say that Jesus can heal your diseases, but 99% of the diseases are still not healed. So people are left in a very confused state. Now how to know what is God's original purpose? For that, you have to go to the Word of God. Now, let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. We don't have to ask any man what his opinion is because God has revealed it very clearly in His Word. My question is, why did God create man? That is the straight line. Supposing man had never sinned. Man would have walked on the straight line. If you can understand what that straight line is, then you will understand why Jesus picked us up when we fell down. If somebody were to ask you, why did Jesus save you from your sin? What answer would you give? Many Christians would give different answers. Supposing somebody were to ask you, are you saved? Has Jesus forgiven your sin? Why has He forgiven your sin? What answer would you give? Many different answers people would give. Some would say, so that I don't go to hell. So that I go to heaven when I die. Some would say a little better, say, well, God saved me so that I can serve Him in some way, help the poor people around me. But even a lot of people who spend their life helping the poor, they get quite frustrated after some years. These are all human ideas. If you want to know God's purpose, you've got to go to the Bible. And you can't understand that purpose somewhere later on in the Bible. But you've got to go right at the beginning. You know, once the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Is it permitted to divorce a man for, for a man to divorce his wife? And Jesus said, No. They said, but uh, Moses permitted divorce. You know what Jesus told them? Jesus said, but it was not like that in the beginning. God, what Jesus told the Pharisees was, if you want to understand God's purpose, you must go to the beginning. And in the beginning, he did not want Adam and Eve to divorce each other. And if you want to know God's purpose concerning anything, you have to go to the beginning. After that, it's true that God permitted divorce, God permitted many things. But God permitted all those things because man fell into such a deep pit of sin. That's why before Jesus came, God permitted many, many things. He permitted Abraham to have many wives, David to have many wives. He permitted them to kill their earthly enemies. That was not God's perfect will. No. If you want to know God's perfect will, you must go to the beginning. There are many things in the Old Testament which God permitted. It was not His perfect will. 
I don't have time to go into all the reasons why God permitted so many things in the Old Testament. But we know that He permitted people to marry many wives, to divorce their wives, or human enemies to be killed, people to like Solomon to prosper so much. But if you want to know God's original perfect plan, you got to go back to the time before man fell into sin. So Jesus came to bring us back to that original purpose. See, now all of us were born here in the pit. And many of us, we have experienced Jesus lifting us up, forgiving us our sin. And now we need to understand what was God's plan for our life. We know that God made a beautiful world. And he made a garden. A beautiful garden. And we know that he told Adam to look after that garden. He gave him a work to do. But he did not create Adam because he wanted a gardener. That's very important to understand. God didn't make a garden and then say, oh, now we need a gardener to look after this garden, so let's make a man. No. He did not create man because he wanted somebody to serve him. He already had millions of angels who served him. That is not what he was looking for. So that's the number one thing we need to understand. What is that? That God did not create man just because he wanted somebody to serve him. So this idea that Jesus saved you in order to serve him is completely wrong. Why do you get married? Why does a man get married? Is it because he wants a servant? Unfortunately, some marriages are like that. But that's not why God made a wife for man. God didn't say, well, this Adam needs a servant, let's make a wife for him. He said he's lonely, he needs some fellowship, let's make a woman to be a companion for him. That's the primary purpose of marriage, not even children. Fellowship. A marriage where there is no fellowship between husband and wife is a total failure, even if they have children. Even if they make a lot of money, and even if they make their children educate them, train them and everything, it's a total failure if the husband and wife don't have fellowship. And unfortunately, most marriages are like that. But that's another subject. But what I'm trying to say is that when God made man, it was not with the purpose of wanting somebody to serve him. Now, if God's purpose was service, if the straight line is to serve God, then we can say that Jesus saved man so that he can start serving God again. But that straight line is not serving God. Now read. You know, when God made all the different things on the five days of the week, He just said something, but He never told us the purpose with which He made those things. He said, let there be light. But he never told us why he created the light. He said, let there be a heaven. 
But he never told us why. He said, let there be the earth, the dry land, but he never told us why. And then he uh, made many other things, but he never told us why. Even the birds and the creatures and everything. But on the sixth day, when it came to making man, before he made man, he said, there is a purpose with which I am creating man. Never before did God say that. But when it came to creating man, he said, let us make man so that he can fulfill this purpose. And there we understand God's purpose. In Genesis 1.26, a very important verse. He said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And let them rule over everything on the earth. So we see two things there. Please remember them. Because that's the reason with which God created you. That's the reason with which God sent you to this earth as a little baby years ago. And that's the reason with which Jesus saved you from your sin. This twofold purpose is not just something that we must remember in our head. It's something that must be the power and the guiding power in my life. And if you understand that, your life will never be frustrating or boring anymore. First of all, God created you that you might reflect His likeness. Number one reason. He did not say, let us make man so that we can have somebody to serve us. No. He said, let us make man so that he can reflect our likeness. So, what does that mean? If I serve him and I don't reflect his likeness, I'm a failure. For example, when the Indian army decides to recruit people to, for the army, what? What's the purpose? Just so that they can put somebody into a uniform? No! It is to fight for the country. Now a soldier who only goes around with his uniform and doesn't fight for his country, he's a failure as a soldier. He may put on uniform, but that is secondary. His main purpose is to fight. We may serve the Lord, but that is secondary. Our main purpose is to reflect His likeness. That's my point. And if I'm taken up just with serving God, I'm as foolish as a soldier who's just taken up with his uniform and not with fighting. How many of you have understood that serving God is secondary? Many Christians haven't understood that. All your service for God is useless if you don't fulfill your primary purpose. What is that primary purpose? To reflect God's light. You know that no angel in heaven was created like that. An, an angel is incapable of reflecting God's likeness. But man was created to reflect God's likeness. That's why when Jesus came on earth, he didn't come primarily to preach or even heal the sick. The Bible says no one has seen God at any time. But Jesus came to earth to reveal to us what God is like. What is the primary purpose of Jesus coming to earth? He came here to show us how God wanted man to live. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, you say your sins are forgiven. Why? He didn't save you to go to meetings. He didn't save you to sing songs. He didn't, he didn't save you to serve Him. 
He didn't save you because he wanted money. See, that's what some preachers teach that God wants your money. That's why he saved you. That's a lot of rubbish. And they force you to give. They give the impression that God is very poor. God's not poor. He created the heaven and earth. The two rupees you put into the offering box is not going to help him to do his work. That only goes into the preacher's pocket. God doesn't need it. That's, that's a wrong idea. God saved us for one purpose. That we might live on earth and reflect God's likeness in our character. If we don't do that, even if you give one lakh of rupees to God, He's not interested. No matter how much you serve God, you're a failure. What does it mean in practical terms? The Bible is a very practical book. That means if I serve God, if I travel all over the world preaching, and I suffer and I sacrifice in order to serve God, go here and there and go to difficult places to preach the gospel. And I don't reflect the humility and the purity of Christ at home to my wife. I'm a failure. If I don't reflect the humility and the love and the goodness of God in my relationship to other people and I just go around preaching wonderful sermons, I am a failure. If you go to 10,000 meetings and, and you don't reflect the likeness of God at home, I want to say you're a failure. God's not interested in your going to meetings. God's not interested in your money. He didn't save you for any of those reasons. He saved you so that you might fulfill that original purpose. Has any preacher ever told you that? They themselves don't know God's purpose very often. And yet it's here in the Bible. But you know it's easier to serve God than to reflect His likeness. It's much easier to get up here and preach a sermon than to overcome anger. And that's why we choose the easier path of serving God instead of overcoming sin. A, a man who does not know how to overcome getting angry at his wife how can he serve God? He can't serve God at all. What, what can he tell others? He can teach others how to get angry at their wife. What else can he teach them? He's a failure. And yet there are a lot of preachers like that who don't have any victory or anger going around preaching. You know, you know why? Because they think God has saved them to serve Him. It doesn't matter how you live at home so long as you serve God. That's a lie. Remember this, brothers and sisters. The primary purpose with which God saved us was, Jesus saved us, was that we might once again reflect the likeness of God. Now, the same thing we read in the New Testament. We read in Romans 8 and verse 28 that if you love God, if you love God, God arranges all your circumstances to work for your good. 
అక్కడ ఏం చెప్పబడిందంటే నువ్వు దేవుని ప్రేమించినట్లయితే అన్ని పరిస్థితులు కూడా సమకూడి నీకు మేలు కలుగుడికై జరుగుతున్నాయి ఇది ఒక గొప్ప అద్భుతమైన దేవుడు అన్ని పరిస్థితులను ప్రతి దానిని కూడా ఒకే ఉద్దేశం వరకు నా కొరకు అది నా మంచి వరకు మై గుడ్ ఏమిటి నాకు జరిగే మేలు మెనీ పీపుల్ are so earthly minded that the only good they can think of is more money promotion better house something like that chaala mandi aalochinche edante aika manchi ante edo ekku dhanam pondadam manchi idu sampadindo edo oda padonata pandaru ani anukunta what is the greatest good that god can ever do to a man devudu oka manavudu tanniti kante goppa ga chese mele emiti what is the greatest good he can do to you ఏటి దేవుడు నీకు అన్నిటి కంటే గొప్పగా మంచి వచ్చేసింది ఎవరైనా దానికి సమాధానం చెప్పగలరా నీకు ఆరోగ్యం ప్రాపర్టీ ల్యాండ్ జాబ్ ద గ్రేటెస్ట్ గుడ్ గాడ్ కెన్ డూ మ్యాన్ ఆ యొక్క ఉద్యోగము లేకపోతే ధనము లేకపోతే ఆస్తులు ఇవ్వడం అదా దేవుడు మనకు ఏదో చేసింది నేను దాని కొరకు నా యొక్క ఉద్దేశం బైబుల్ చెప్తుంది రోమన్స్ ఎయిట్ ట్వంటీ ఎయిట్ సెస్ గాడ్ కాసెస్ ఆల్ థింగ్స్ టు వర్క్ టుగెదర్ ఫర్ గుడ్ If you love God, He makes everything work for your good. And what is that good? It's written here in verse 29. You know what it is? It says here, that we might be conformed to the likeness of Christ. So if you ask God, Lord, what's your, Almighty God, what's your definition of good? What's the greatest good you can do to a man? Say, oh, make him in the likeness of Christ. You believe that? If we believe it, we'll say, Lord, this is the greatest good I want, not only for myself, but for my children. Um... when people say oh brother god has blessed my children na sadhana ga pedalu prabhu sahodara devudu na biddalu enta ganu deevinchadante oh he has blessed your children ni mee oka biddalu deevinchada devudu you mean they becoming like jesus christ aa varu yesu christ la uyyara no they got a job in the gulf ha kaadu aa ikka gulf deshalo varaku jeevu vachindi oh dear how stupid you are or they got admission in medical college ha lekapothe oka medical college lo seat ochindi you are supposed to be believers and you think that is the greatest good god can do to you oka vishwasaga unna vaadu nu anukunta devudu anukati meelu cheyadu adhe anukunta you got to have a few screws loose in your head to believe that ha vishayane nammadaniki ni bosha ni tallo konni screw udipoyandi what is the greatest good god can do for my children aa beddalu anniti kante goppa manchi yedi it is to make them like jesus christ there is absolutely nothing in the world to equal that I believe that 35 years ago as a young man, I believe that today. That the greatest good God can ever do to me is to make me like Jesus Christ. It's not to make me rich. I don't believe that riches can, is God's will. It is God's will. is the best god can do for anyone edo dhanam ivadame edo devudu ichinaatu annitikante shrasthamaina even nenu anukonu if you want to know what god thinks of money aa devudu dhanam gurinchi even anukuntunnadu meer telusukunte just look around in the world and to see what type of people he gives money to aa lokalo chusinatlaite etuvanti varike devudu atuvanti dhanam isthadu meer chodochu can you look around our country and see what type of people god has given money to మన దేశంలో ఎటువంటి వారికి దేవుడు గొప్ప ధనాన్ని ఇచ్చాడు మీకు తెలుసా అది ఆల్ వండర్ఫుల్ హంబుల్ గాడ్లీ పీపుల్ వాళ్ళందరూ ఎంతో మంచి అద్భుతమైనటువంటి తగ్గించుకునేటువంటి గొప్ప మనుషులు బికాస్ క్రుక్స్ అండ్ చీట్స్ దేర్ ఆర్ వన్స్ హూ గట్ మనీ వాళ్ళందరూ భయంకరమైనటువంటి మోసగాలు మరి కుదంత్రాలు చేసేవారు వై డస్ గాడ్ గివ్ మనీ టు సచ్ పీపుల్ ఎందుకు దేవుడు ఎటువంటి వారికి ధనాన్ని ఇచ్చాడు బికాస్ హి సేస్ మనీ హస్ గట్ నో ఇటర్నల్ వాల్యూ ఇచ్చేనంటే ఆయక ధనానికి నిచ్చత్వంలో ఏ విధంగా విలువ లేదు కాబట్టి డి అండర్స్టాండ్ దట్ అది అర్థం చేసుకున్నారా what is the greatest good god can do to you yen tanniti kante shrasthamaina manchi devudu meeku cheyagaligedi supposing god appeared to you in a dream tonight ee ratri devudu mee kallo kalpinchadu ankonde and said ask for one request and i'll give it to you aina adigadu ankonde meeru oka adiginatlayite nenu adini gar isthanu tell me what do you ask for yen tu meeru adugutaru what do you ask for yen tu adugutaru i know what i'll ask for nenu etu adugutaru naaku telusu i say lord 
Make me a little more like Jesus. Okay, one request for your children. Quickly, ah, give me an answer. What do you answer? I hope it will be, Lord, make them like Jesus. That's my prayer. I've got four sons and that's what I pray for them regularly. Lord, if you make them like Jesus, that's enough. In eternity, that's the thing that will have value. Remember that, that's the only thing that will have value. Makes everything work towards this one goal. That's the work towards which he's working. <coughs> For example, when somebody curses me, is that a good thing? What do you think? I mean, as far as he's concerned, it's a bad thing. But how about as far as I'm concerned? Let me ask you another way. Is it a good thing to obey the word of God or not? Yes or no? Everybody says yes? How can you obey the word of God which says bless them that curse you unless somebody curses you first? You just now said it's a good thing to obey the word of God. One word of God says bless them that curse you. You have to get somebody to curse you first, then only you can bless them. Is it a good thing to have enemies? Now you know the answer. <laughs> Just love your enemies. How can you love somebody? You, if, how can you love an enemy if you don't have any enemies? Do you know that there are some things you can never do in heaven? Can you love your enemies in heaven? Can you bless those who curse you in heaven? Impossible. There's nobody going to curse you there. Everybody's going to love you there. Jesus said, do good to those who hate you. Don't wait till you go to heaven. You won't be able to do it there. Nobody, nobody will hate you there. You know, there are, some, there are some things you can never do after you leave the earth. If you want to do it, you better do it now. If you miss the opportunity now, you missed it forever. I don't want to miss the opportunity. I want to do good to everybody who hates me. I want to bless everybody who curses me. And I want to love every enemy because I'll never get another chance when I go to heaven. I'm eager to do it. Just like the Marwadi businessman is eager to make money while he gets a chance, I am eager to love my enemies while I get a chance. So many business people, they are looking around for opportunities. Oh, some new thing is coming up in the market. We better get quickly into the market. Otherwise, somebody else will get in and we won't get the chance to make money. That's how a Christian should be. Not to make money, but to become like Jesus. I get opportunities every day. To humble myself, to bless others, to reflect the likeness of Christ in the different situations of life. Let me not miss those opportunities because I'll never get them again. Only on this earth. And the wisest people are those who seek to let God fulfill His purpose through all the circumstances of life. Now many people when they read Romans 8.28, God works everything for good. They can only think of earthly things. They went for an, in they went for an interview and they didn't get the job. And they say, well, Romans 8, 28, I'm going to get a better job. That's why uh, God didn't give this to me. Here I was supposed to get only 5,000. I'm going to get a job of 6,000. That's why 
this didn't i didn't get this interview ikkada kevala ka 5000 rupayalu usnay ka na 5000 rupayalu 6000 rupayalu job gurinchani devudu ee kujjayi ipo aapedu anukuntadu god's purpose maybe you had another job for 3000 but you become a little more like jesus that, that's his aim ayye devuni ku uddeshinu 3000 rupayalu jeethamlo unnadu jagan kello chakkada meer mariyaku christo la avachu gaadu unless you understand god's goal in your life new nee oka jeevithamlo devuni ku uddeshinu em ante gure ante nu telusukovali you will never accomplish it nee dani sampurthi cheyaledu you know it's like when your parents send you to school as a little child nevu chinna vidiga unnappudu nee talidandullu aa yokka badiki pampinchina what do you go to school for enduku nevu aa yokka badiki velthunna i mean you don't go to school to play marbles and uh, fool around during the break time aa nuva badiki velledu edo goli kala aadukodaniki aa yokka vere samayalo aadukodaniki kaadu play football and be captain of the football team aa lekapothe akada football aada football team yokka captain ga avadaniki kaadu and get zero in maths and zero in chemistry aa yokka lekkallone lekapothe akada science sasramalu sunnalu techukodaniki but you are first class at marbles అయితే నువ్వు ఆ యొక్క గోలి కాయలు ఆడడంలో చాలా బాగా ఆడుతున్నావు అండ్ యూ క్యాప్టెన్ ద ఫుట్బాల్ టీమ్ వాట్స్ యూస్ ద నువ్వు ఆ యొక్క ఫుట్బాల్ టీమ్ కొక నాయకుడిగా ఉన్నావు కదా హౌ మెనీ పేరెంట్స్ సెండ్ देयर चिल्ड्रन టు ప్లే మార్బుల్స్ అండ్ టు క్యాప్టెన్ ద ఫుట్బాల్ టీమ్ ఎంత మంది తల్లి దండులు ఆ యొక్క బిడ్డల ఫుట్బాల్ కే టీమ్ కెప్టెన్ అవడానికి అండ్ సే వెల్ వాట్ మార్క్స్ యు గెట్ ఇన్ యువర్ సబ్జెక్ట్స్ నాట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఆ నువ్వు ఎటువంటి మార్కుల ఆ యొక్క వేరే వేరే శాస్త్రాలు వచ్చినా పర్వాలేదు యు గాట్ టు బి క్రేజీ and no pitch word one matter i see the first purpose of sending a person to school is to get to get an education the football and the marbles and all that is secondary ah ikka nu a badiki pampinchade daniki uddesham enta motta modati vishayanu konta chaluvuni telusukodaniki in the same way adhe vidhanga what is god placed us on earth primarily for enduku devudu nin ee yokka bhoolaka meeda unchadu just to eat tintani and drink ba thragadaniki and sleep nidra povadaniki produce children బిడ్డల్ గా గుర్తించడానికి బ్రింగ్ దెమ్ అప్ వాళ్ళని పెంచడానికి అండ్ డై చనిపోతారు వై ఈవెన్ ద పిగ్స్ డు దట్ ఆ పందులు కూడా అపోలే చేస్తున్నాయి దే ఈట్ తింటాయి దే డ్రింక్ తాగుతాయి దే స్లీప్ నిద్రపోతాయి దే బ్రింగ్ అప్ ద లిటిల్ వన్స్ అండ్ దే డై ఆ చిన్న పిల్లల్ని పెంచితే చనిపోతారు ఇస్ దట్ ఆల్ అంతే నో వి వర్ క్రియేటెడ్ ఫర్ సంథింగ్ బెటర్ దెన్ దట్ మనం దాని కంటే మరి ఎక్కువ ఇన్ దాని కొరకు మనం సృష్టింపబడ్డాం టు అకంప్లిష్ గాడ్స్ పర్పస్ ఆన్ ఎర్త్ మనం దేనికి ఉద్దేశాన్ని మనం నెరవేర్చడానికి సో దట్ ఇఫ్ ఐ లివ్ అ సర్టెన్ నంబర్ ఆఫ్ ఇయర్స్ ఆన్ ఎర్త్ నేను కొన్ని సంవత్సరాలు ఈ భూలోకమే జీవించిన తర్వాత ఐ హావ్ షోన్ అట్ లీస్ట్ అ ఫ్యూ పీపుల్ ఇన్ మై ఎర్త్లీ లైఫ్ వాట్ గాడ్ ఇస్ లైక్ కనీసం కొంతమంది కైనా సరే దేవుడు ఎలా ఉంటాడు అనేది నేను చూపించడానికి బై మై కైండ్నెస్ నాయక దయ ద్వారా అండ్ గుడ్నెస్ మంచితనం ద్వారా అండ్ హ్యూమిలిటీ నాయక దయత్వం ద్వారా అండ్ లవ్ ప్రేమ ద్వారా అండ్ ప్యూరిటీ స్వచ్ఛత ద్వారా వేర్ ఎవర్ ఐ గో నేను ఎక్కడికి వెళ్ళినా సరే ఐ హావ్ షోన్ అట్ లీస్ట్ అ ఫ్యూ పీపుల్ నేను కొంతమంది కైనా సరే దేర్ ఇస్ అ గాడ్ ఇన్ హెవెన్ ఈ లోకంలో దేవుడు ఉన్నాడు I'm not like him fully but I've given you a little impression of what he's like. నేను పూర్తిగాయన వల్ల లేకపోయినా కొంతవరకు నేను ఆయన్ని చూపిస్తున్నాను నాలో. I want to remind you of that God in heaven. నేను పరలోకంలో దేవుడు ఉన్నాడని మీకు చెప్పాను. And I want to remind you that eternity is more important than time. ఆయక ఈ సమయం కంటే ఆ నిత్యత ఎంతో ముఖ్యమైనదని నేను మీకు నిర్ణయం చేస్తున్నాను. Do people get that impression when they meet you? నిన్ను ఎవరైనా కలుసుకున్నప్పుడు అటువంటి అభిప్రాయం కలిగించారు why is god allowed you to work in an office ఎందుకు దేవుడు నిన్ను ఒక కార్యాలయంలో పంచేయడానికి అవకాశం ఇస్ ఇట్ ఓన్లీ టు మేక్ మనీ ఏ తన సంపాదించుకోవడానికి నో 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 కానీ కాదు అట్ సెకండరీ అదంత రెండోది ప్రైమరీ పర్పస్ ఇస్ టు రిఫ్లెక్ట్ క్రైస్ట్ ఆ మొదటి విషయం ఏంటంటే ఈ క్రీస్తును ప్రతిబింబించేది i worked in the navy for 11 years నేను నావీలో 11 సంవత్సరాలు పాటు పంచేశాను and i know when i was a converted christian there నేను అక్కడే నేను ఒక క్రైస్తవుడిగా మారాను మై ప్రైమరీ పర్పస్ వాస్ టు లెట్ పీపుల్ సీ క్రైస్ట్ ఇన్ మై లైఫ్ నా యొక్క ప్రాథమికమైన ఉద్దేశం ఏంటంటే అక్కడ క్రీస్తును నాలో ఇతరులు చూడాలని ఇఫ్ దే సో క్రైస్ట్ ఇన్ మై లైఫ్ ఐ ఫుల్ఫిల్ మై పర్పస్ దేన్ క్రీస్తును నన్ను ఇతరులు చూసినట్లు నాలో చూసినట్లయితే నేను కొంత ఉద్దేశాన్ని నెరవేర్చాను మై వర్కింగ్ ఆన్ ద షిప్ అండ్ ఆర్నింగ్ అ సాలరీ ఆఫ్ ద సెకండరీ ఆ నేను ఆ యొక్క వాడలో పని చేయడం జీతాన్ని తెచ్చుకోవడం అంతా తర్వాతది మై లాంగింగ్ వాస్ ద పీపుల్ హూ మెట్ మీ would never forget me in their whole life nanna naaku uddesham entante nannu kalusukona varu vaa jeevithala mari eppudu nannu marchipokodu they must remember that sometime in their life a christian came across their path vaari jeevithamlo oka kristudu maayika jeevithamlo oka maru ichchadu na gnyapinchukovali who who would stand up for what was right deeraithe sari aindo edaithe nijamo dani gurinchi nilchunna vaa yakti i had many commanding officers none of them would forget me నాకు అనేక మంది నా మీద పై అధికారులు ఉండేవారు అవ్వరు కూడా నన్ను ఎప్పుడు మర్చిపోయి బికాస్ వెన్ ఐ టోల్ మీ టు డూ సంథింగ్ రాంగ్ ఐ సి ఐమ్ సారీ సార్ ఐమ్ అ క్రిస్టియన్ ఐ కాన్ డూ వాట్ ఇస్ రాంగ్ ఇచ్చేదంటే వారు ఏదో నన్ను ఒక పని చేయమన్నప్పుడు క్ష
And they probably never had in their whole life somebody who gave an answer like that. They wouldn't forget me. On their deathbed they would remember me. You must be like that. In your office. People must remember that you are a Christian. who reflected the life of Christ of forgiveness and goodness and humility and brokenness and uprightness and that you were not running after money like all the other people and that you were not sitting in the office criticizing your boss all the time like all the other people in the office that you did your work faithfully and you reflected what Christ was like. Yes, Christ alone and what are Daniel Prathulam Pachas. Then only you fulfill your purpose. But just to say on Sunday I go to a meeting and sing a few songs, that's not Christianity. Christianity is not a Sunday affair. It is seven days a week. It's 52 weeks a year. It's a full-time job being a Christian. And God makes everything in my life work for my good to make me like Christ. Now, let me show you another verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, here it speaks about the Holy Spirit. Now, around the world, all over the world, people are seeking for to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And there are all types of funny things that they say happen to them when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Some people say they got an electric shock. Some people say they fell down and started laughing or crying or something like that. All types of things they say. Well, what does the whole Bible say? God didn't send the Holy Spirit to give us electric shocks. If you want electric shock, just put your hand to a plug. You don't, have, you don't need the Holy Spirit. Plug point. I mean, if that's all you're interested in. But I'm not seeking the Holy Spirit because I want electric shock. I'm, I, I'm not seeking the Holy Spirit for excitement. The Holy Spirit has come for one purpose. It's not to make you laugh, it's not to make you cry. It's not to give you an electric shock. Read 2 Corinthians 3. It says in verse 18 that the Holy Spirit shows us the glory of the Lord and changes us into that same image from one degree of glory to another. See, it says there about the Holy Spirit at the end of that verse. When the Holy Spirit is Lord of our life, that means when He fills our life, what does He do? In the mirror, the mirror is the Bible. When you read the Bible, He will show you the beauty of Jesus in the pages of the Bible. When you read the Gospels, you will see the beauty of Jesus' life. First of all, the Holy Spirit shows you how Jesus was. And secondly, it says He transforms us into that same image from one degree of glory to another. Not just overnight. That means first of all the Holy Spirit will show you, show me how Jesus forgave others. Let me take one example. How He forgave people who were so evil to Him. And then the Holy Spirit will make me like that. He will make me like, like Jesus, ready to forgive evil people. He will show me how Jesus washed people's feet. And He'll make me like that. Ready to do the dirtiest jobs for anybody. 
Yeah, like that, little by little, He'll show us the glory of Jesus. How Jesus was so totally pure. And He'll make me like that. How Jesus never loved money or ran after money. And he'll, he'll make me like that. The world is full of people who love money. But Jesus didn't. And he was the happiest person who walked on the earth. It's a great deception to think that money will make you happy. It doesn't. It makes a lot of people unhappy. There's only one thing that, there's only one thing that can really make you happy. And that is when you are conform to the likeness of Christ. That doesn't mean God will make you starve. God doesn't let His children starve. God doesn't let His children live in the slums. Jesus never lived in a slum. Jesus never lived in a slum. He never lived in a palace. But he was the happiest person that walked on the earth. You know, the devil tries to blind our minds to what are the real values of life. He tells even believers that the main thing is to enjoy yourself. The main thing is to make a lot of money live a comfortable life and also have a little bit of religion. That's not God's purpose. Jesus didn't come on earth to give people a little bit of religion. He came to take over our whole life so that we can reflect the likeness of God in our earthly life. So my brothers and sisters, whatever else you may do, you can be in any profession. A profession is only a means of earning a living. Don't make that profession your goal in life. The profession is only a means of earning a living so that you don't become a beggar in this world. I'm not saying you should be a full-time worker. No, by all means, earn your living. Get a good job and earn a living. But don't let that become the greatest goal in your life. Don't let advancement in your profession become the greatest goal in your life. Because then the devil has deceived you. Say, that is a means for me to earn my living and take care of my family. But my goal in life is to reflect the likeness of Christ. That's that's the, that's our goal in life. Have you understood it? God makes everything work together for this good. And the Holy Spirit comes to fill us with one purpose to make us more and more like Christ in our daily life. That's why we must make the life of Christ that we read in the Gospels the subject of our intense study. You see how Jesus detested the religious hypocrites called the Pharisees. He called them snakes. You know, snakes look very beautiful on the outside. All of poison inside. And Jesus looked at these religious people who looked so holy on the outside. He said, you're all snakes, you're all snakes. He said, you all look so nice on the outside. But inside, you're full of your own covetousness. 
అయితే లోపల మీరు మీ యొక్క దురాశలతో నిండి ఉన్నారు ద బైబిల్ సేస్ జీసస్ క్రైస్ట్ ఇస్ ద సేమ్ యెస్టర్డే టుడే అండ్ ఫరెవర్ బైబిల్ ఏం చెప్తుంది యేసు నిన్న నేడు నిరంతరం మాత్రమే ఇది కాదు ఇఫ్ హి కేమ్ టు మెనీ ఆఫ్ అవర్ చర్చెస్ టుడే ఆయన ఈ దినాల్లో మన సంఘాలు కాదు హి వుడ్ సే ద సేమ్ థింగ్ to a whole lot of religious people who look nice on the outside aa bahinga mata paranga kanipinchante chakkaga anamane vaartho aa ee dinan kuda ade cheptaru he would say the same thing he say you're all a bunch of snakes aa antadu meer andaru oka sarpa santanam antadu also nice on the outside baitike ento andanga kanapadu but inside in your heart all you're interested is in money and honor and comfort and position aa ee hrudayallo unnade entante edo manchi saukyalu dabbu inka eyo kavalanukuntaru ya If Jesus came into our midst he'd do the same thing he'd say the same thing as he said when he came to the synagogues 2000 years ago. అంటే వేల సంవత్సరాల క్రితం సినగోగలోకి వచ్చినప్పుడు ఆయన ఏం మాట్లాడతారు అన్నాడు ఈ దినాల మన సంఘాలకు వస్తాయి అన్నదే మాట అంటాడు. And they throw him out of the synagogue then they throw him out today. ఆయన ఆ దిన ఆయన ఆ దినాల సినగోగలో నుండి బయటికి పంపించేశారు తోసేశారు ఈ దినాల మనం కూడా ఆయన తోసేవారు. But he doesn't Jesus doesn't come himself now he sends his servants. అయితే ఈ దినాల్లో దేవుడు ఆయన యొక్క ఆయనకి ఆయనే రావట్లేదు కానీ ఆయనకి సేవకులను పంపిస్తున్నాడు. and they do the same thing to his true prophets aina nizamainanti prophetical vishayam kuda alane chesaru many christians don't like to hear the truth aneka mundi christulu satyalu vinnaniki ishtapadu man looks on the outward appearance but god looks at the heart manodaithe bahya roopani chustadu gaani devudu aika bahya roopani i want to say to all of you my brothers and sisters oh the sahodarlara aneka vishayam nenu cheptunna god doesn't care for your outward appearance nee oka bahya roopani gunchi devudu he doesn't care what impression you give to others about how holy or how spiritual you are వెంటటి పరిశుద్ధంగా నవ ఆత్మీయంగా నవ అని ఇతరులకు ఎటువంటి అభిప్రాయం తెలియజేస్తున్నా దాని గురించి ఆయన పట్టించుకో హి హస్ కమ్ టు చేంజ్ आवर హార్ట్స్ ఆ హృదయాలను మార్చడానికి ఆయన వచ్చాడు వేర్ వి ఆర్ చేంజ్డ్ ఇన్వర్డ్లీ ఇన్టు హిస్ లైక్నెస్ అది ఏంటంటే మన అంతరంగ ముందు ఆయన సౌరూప్యంలోనికి మారట దట్స్ వై వి నీడ్ టు సబ్మిట్ आवर లైఫ్ టోటల్లీ టు హిమ్ అండ్ సే లార్డ్ హోలీ స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఐ వాంట్ యు టు డు వన్ థింగ్ ఇన్ మై లైఫ్ అంటు చేతే మనం దేవుని చెప్పాల్సిన పరిశుద్ధ పరిశుద్ధాత్మక చెప్పాల్సిన నా జీవితంలో విషయం చేయాలి ఐ వాంట్ యు టు చేంజ్ మీ ఇంటు ద లైక్నెస్ ఆఫ్ క్రైస్ట్ యేసు సారూప్యంగా నన్ను మార్చు ప్రభు నాట్ జస్ట్ ఫర్గివ్ మై సిన్ నా పాపమును క్షమించిన మాత్రమే కాదు ఫర్గివ్ మై సిన్ ఇస్ లైక్ క్లీనింగ్ ద కప్ ఆ పాపర క్షమించబడిన ఏంటంటే ఆ యొక్క గిన్నెని శుభ్రపరచడం లాంటి వై డు వి క్లీన్ ద టంబ్లర్స్ ఎందుకు మనం ఐత గ్లాసులు ఎందుకు కడుగుతాం నాట్ జస్ట్ ఫర్ డెకరేషన్ టు పోర్ సంథింగ్ ఇన్సైడ్ ఐత అదేదో అక్కడ అలంకరణగా పెట్టడానికి కాదు గాని అందులో ఏదో వై డస్ గాడ్ క్లీన్ అవర్ హార్ట్ ఎందుకు మన హృదయాలను దేవుడు కడుగుతున్నాడు దట్స్ నాట్ ది ఓన్లీ థింగ్ హి వాంట్స్ టు డు ఆ ఏదో అది ఒకటి చేయాలి వై డస్ హి లిఫ్ట్ us up from this bed ఎందు చేత ఆయన ఈ గోత్రాన్ని మనం వెళ్తాడు వి కెన్ కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు దట్ ఒరిజినల్ పర్పస్ ఎందు చేత అంటే దేవుని యొక్క మొదటి ప్రణాళికలోనికి మనం వెళ్తానికి వాట్ ఇస్ దట్ ఒరిజినల్ పర్పస్ ఏంటి ఆ మొదటి ఉద్దేశం నాట్ హి డస్ వాంట్ యువర్ మనీ ఆర్ యువర్ సర్వీస్ హి వాంట్స్ to reflect his likeness i need to need to need the general cause and double have the same god god i need to look and choose and remember this that whatever may we may do for the lord has no value if we don't reflect his likeness first even if a police in manalo mother ga chupi chupi painatle the man ee chesina our our service for the lord must be an overflow of our life manu devuni chese seva aini mana manalo unta aini oka jeevitham oka pundi padaledu ga undali the cup is first cleaned ఆయక గిన్న మొదటి కడగబడాలి that's how our heart is first cleaned there with the life with the blood of jesus మన హృదయం కూడా యేసుక్రీస్ రక్తంచేత కడగబడాలి all our past sin were cleansed మన పాత పాపం నుండి కడగబడినాయి then god wants to fill us అప్పుడు ఆయన మన కప్పు మన గిన్నె నింపాలి inwardly we live by the values of christ life అప్పుడు మన లోపల అంతరంగం ఉంది యేసుక్రీస్ యొక్క విలువల ద్వారా మనం జీవిస్తాం where my inner goals and motives are changed man lopal unna tvante naika uddeshalu aashalu maartayi where our goal is not to become great in the world but to become more christ like man ee lokamlo edo goppaga ayipadam kaadu gaani christuvale maaradu where our goal becomes not to make more money but to reflect the likeness of christ ekkodu dhanana sampadidanam kaadu gaani mari ekkuga yesu sarupyanni maarchukundam then from that inward change as the cup gets full it overflows ఆ విధంగా ఆయన లోపల నుండి ఆయన గిన్నె పొంగి పడినప్పుడు ఓవర్ఫ్లో ఇస్ వాట్ వి కాల్ సర్వీస్ ఆ పొంగి పొరిలినటువంటి భాగాన్ని దాన్ని అంటాం అదే సేవన కప్ ఇస్ ఓవర్ఫ్లోయింగ్ అండ్ బ్లెస్సింగ్ అదర్ పీపుల్ వేర్ ఎవర్ వి గో ఆ మనలోన గిన్నె పొంగి పొరిలినప్పుడు మనం ఎక్కడికి వెళ్ళినా తెలుసు దేవిస్తుంట అదే సేవ that is the only worthwhile life a man can live on this earth ఆ దొక్కటే ఒక వ్యక్తి ఈ లోకంలో ఒక విలువైన జీవితంగా జీవించే ఒక ముఖ్యమైన ఐ బిలీవ్ మెనీ క్రిస్టియన్స్ ఆర్ వేస్టింగ్ देयर లైఫ్ నేను నమ్ముతాను అనేక మంది క్రైస్తవుల వారికి జీవితాన్ని వృధా చేసుకుంటారని देयर దే అకంప్లిష్ నథింగ్ మోర్ దెన్ ఎనీ వరల్డ్లీ పర్సన్ అకంప్లిషెస్ ఆ ప్రపంచంలో అంటే ఏ వ్యక్తి అంటే కూడా అతలే ఎంతకంటే ఎక్కువ నేను సాధించడం లేదు ఇఫ్ యు వర్ టు ఆస్క్ యువర్
ఒక ప్రపంచిక వ్యక్తి ఏ విధంగా అతడు కూర్చో ఉన్నప్పుడు ఏంటి నీకు గొప్ప వ్యక్తి you built a couple of houses like him atravale oka rendu moodu illu pattukunnao and you brought up your children and got them married like him atravale ne oka pedlu pinchao vaari laaga pedlu chesao your life has been a failure just like that fellow's life has been a failure adi oka jeevitham ye vidhanga vaa ayipindi alane ne oka jeevitham kuda odipoyinattu you've not influenced people towards god nevu ni vyaktile devun vaipu nevu vaanni raabattu you've not reflected the life of christ and led people closer to the lord yesu christ oka jeevithanni nilo sathamulu unchaledu kaabatti ni vitalana daggiriki and anyone who lives his life like that's a failure you can measure your life by the number of people whom you have influenced towards god by your life ee oka jeevitham dwara enta manganaithe neevu yesu vaipu laabattuko galigavo danni batte how many people have you drawn towards a more christ like life by the influence of your life ee oka jeevitham dwara enta mandi vyaktulu yesu christ jeevitham vaipu neevu laabattuko galigavo how many people have you drawn to the forgiveness of sins enta mandi vyaktulu neevu aa ika paapa kshamam how many people have you drawn to the humility and the purity and the love of christ yesu christ vala ik yesu christ pramaloniki deenathvalaniki pramaloniki enta mandini neevu maatha if we haven't done that we wasted our earthly life you have done cheya laka poyinatlaite ne ika loka jeevithane we can do so many good things you have anaka manchi karyalu chey but if we don't reflect the likeness of christ we have to consider ourselves failures aithe manu yesu christ ka sarupyane malo prathvalma cheyagapoyinatlaite malaga manu adi odipoyinatlaite you know the world's idea of success prapanchamlo unnatundi aika jayamane vishayam gunchi em anukuntaru telusa oh he's got a big position adu oka manchi unnata sthanam or had a very high position when he retired athu retire ayinappudiki manchi edo manchi thing so much money in his life athu jeevithamlo goppa dhanam sampadinchadu or so many big things like that i don't know no abu vishal maatadtaru what happens in eternity enti nityatvamlo jaragedi when he stand before the lord yes devuni mundu nilavanda he's not going to ask us what what was your rank on earth ha nee bhulaka meda enti nee oka sthiti how much money did you earn enta dabbu nee sampadinchu none of those things abu vishal emi devudadu but he's going to ask us this why nee vishal adugadu did you reflect my likeness in your earthly life nee oka bhu sambandhamaina jeevithamlo maa yokka porika nee chupinchava did was i able to show other people something about myself through your life the lord will ask you know we can't do anything about the years gone by but we can do something about the future and i believe the most blessed people here sitting here listening to this are the young people ah ogade church inta chakkane ide vishayalu vine vaari mukhyanga kontha if you are young you are young meer evana saithe and you hear this message and you are gripped by it you got your whole life you can live for god ee jeevitham anta kuda devunu kuda meer jeevinchabadachu i was gripped by this message when i was 19 years old devu pattam sanchalam unnapudu yokka sandesham dwara na pattabadda i had just become an officer in the navy and i had an ambition and there appudu oka officer ga navy lo unna naaku oka manchi uddesham undadi that ambition was to be the admiral of the navy adhe entante navy lo admiral ga avalanu and then jesus came into my heart appudu yesu na hodayam anukochadu and showed me something far greater than that dani kante ento goppa danni chudi said living for that he said you can live for my kingdom dani kante na jeev na yaka rajya goji nee jeevinchu and i said yes lord pravane ala chestana nana that was nearly 38 years ago adi 38 samvatsaralu kada and i have never regretted my decision na yaka nanyaniki nenu eppudu baadha padaledu i could live my whole life 38 years for god nenu 38 samvatsaralu devuni koraku nenu jeevinchavalsundi think if i had wasted it just climbing the ladder in the world or making money what a wasted life i would have lived nenu aa jeevithamlo ee ka prapanchamaina paddhatulato nenu aa metlu ekkutu nenu aa dhanana sampadhinchu ante i would have come to this age 57 years old and say lord what have i accomplished in life ee aabe edu samsthala vaisla nenu anukunnu unde vedu prabhu nenu eti nenu ipudu sadinchanu so i say you are really blessed if you are young and you are gripped by this truth now meeru yavanasthala ga undi vishayam cheta pattabadinatlaite say lord i want to live for you nenu nee korku 100% whatever you want me to do veem cheyamantunnao to reflect the likeness of christ and to draw other people towards you adhe entante yesu christ ka sarupyana va pradhalim pa chestu itarlu na yesu degre kada that's kabattadu stop our heads before god devuni sannidhilo thallamanchida my heads bowed in prayer man thallamanchi devuni paadam chestu i want to invite you my brothers and sisters to respond to what you heard tonight ఈ రాత్రి సమయంలో మీరు విన్న దానికి మీరు స్పందించాలని నేను అడుగుతున్నాను యు మే హావ్ వేస్టెడ్ మెనీ ఇయర్స్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ పాస్ట్ లైఫ్ మీ గత జీవితంలో అనేక సంవత్సరాలు మీరు యు కాన్ డు ఎనీథింగ్ అబౌట్ ద పాస్ట్ గత మీరు ఏమీ చేయలేదు బట్ సే లార్డ్ ఐ రియల్లీ వాంట్ టు లివ్ 
with eternity's values in view from today onwards i want to live for the things that are eternal not the things that will pass away when time passes away you got to be serious if you're going to play the fool the devil will just lead you astray but if you are serious with god tonight say lord i want my life to count for you the rest of my life whether you give me 5 years or 50 years they must be 100% for god will you take that decision say lord i really wanted to be like that please help me and if you're married you got children pray that your children will live for god not waste their earthly lives heavenly father pray that as we bow before you you will hear the cry of our hearts help us to respond as you want us to with our whole life surrender to you we ask in jesus name yes namo lord amen